The explosions in Kiri Ri are a further example of Russia hitting civilian infrastructure. They want to try and break the will of the Ukrainian people. The drone attack in Moscow over the weekend, there were, there were three drones flown in. Um, the Russians claimed that they shot one down and disrupted the other two. Um, and you can see the pictures of uh, the explosions where one of the drones hit um, sort of a residential and an office building. The area of Moscow it hit is all um, high-end apartments, uh, office buildings, um, and some government departments. Um, and I think the explosions show that you know, once you have disabled a drone, it's not able to find its target. It's still got an explosive warhead in it, and that will fall um, into the city and cause damage. There was only one person injured um, and quite severe damage to uh, some of the buildings. The Ukrainians are keeping their, the use of drones um, uh, very quiet indeed. In fact, they deny knowledge of the attacks that there are in Moscow. So we're not sure whether it's the Ukrainians or whether it is um, Ukrainian sympathizers um, in um, Russia who are sending the drones in. But these are, these are quite big um, aircraft. They're not little hobby drones. Uh, they they are um, up to the si the size of small light aircraft at, at, at times. Uh, and what happens is they're either put on a pre-programmed um, route, which is in the um, uh, the drone automatically navigates itself uh, through through that route um, until it gets to the target, and it will then dive in in the target. Or it's got some form of command and control from the ground, where it has been controlled by an operator in the ground. And what the Russians do is, if they shoot it down, they're clearly um, attacking the aircraft itself. But from electronic disruption, what they try to do is two things. One, break that command and control link that's on the ground. What that often does to drones, if it's a hobby drone, uh, the drones then tend to return to where they took off from. Um, or what happens in this case is the drone uh, loses its communications with the satellites uh, and elsewhere, uh, and then just crashes into the ground. The explosions in Kiri Ri um, are a further example of Russia targeting cities and hitting civilian infrastructure um, and with a number of people killed um, and the death toll is likely to rise because there's a number of traps. Uh, it shows that uh, the Russians don't really care about uh, necessarily targeting military targets. They want to try and break the will of the Ukrainian people by targeting them. Um, and this is almost certainly in response to the drone attacks on Moscow over the weekend. Vladimir Putin's been very careful throughout the conflict to uh, make sure that the narrative that is getting to the Russian people is his narrative and keeping the special military operation, as he calls it, uh, because anyone who refers to it as a war tends to have a heart attack next weekend or fall out of a window. Um, I, he wants to insulate the Russian population from the realities of what's going on the ground. However, I think the attempted coup by the Wagner leader, Prigozhin, um, combined with the drone uh, incidents in Moscow, um, combined with some of the casualties that are coming back, the uh, Russian people are beginning to realise what's going on. Um, and I think Vladimir Putin is concerned about that. And that's why we're seeing him putting a greater control over uh, what uh, some of the political candidates are doing as they prepare for the Russian elections next year, but also um, what's coming out in the press and uh, you have Vladimir Putin turning around and talking about um, threats from within where people are uh, dissenting against um, what Russia is doing inside Ukraine. And he clamps down on that very quickly indeed. Russian Navy Day um, uh, on Sunday, uh, it's held every year on the last Sunday of July, uh, and it's to commemorate uh, Russian sailors and uh, other members of the Russian Navy. Uh, last year, there were 40 um, capital ships, boats and submarines, 42 aircraft flew over and about three and a half thousand personnel. This year, interestingly, he had slightly more um, ships, submarines and boats, um, 45. There were no aircraft flying over. Um, and about 3,000 personnel. Now, interestingly, the, the lack of aircraft flying over um, is the same as happened at the May Day celebrations um, in Red Square in Moscow. 
um, and um, there were no aircraft flew over then. It, the weather was blamed then. There's been no excuse this time, but I think it shows the pressure there is on airframes um, for the Russian special military operation into Ukraine. At the Navy Day, Vladimir Putin promised 30 new uh, ships for the Navy. Uh, he didn't say exactly when they were going to come and where they were going to fit in the priority of other military equipment that is desperately needed for his special military operation into Ukraine. Um, I don't see where he's going to get the resources, the funding um, and access to the technology that he would need to make these capable ships. But again, it shows him trying to control the narrative and trying to suggest that um, he is the president to make sure that the armed services are being looked after. Um, uh, I would suggest that this is probably a very hollow announcement.